got the tiny little baby in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me, brother, in his hand. He's got you and me, brother, in his hand. He's got you and me, brother, in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got everybody here in his hand. He's got everybody here in his hand. He's got everybody here in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. Okay. Pardon? No, one part is not written out. We're singing it. Yeah. <laughs> 
and we'll praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name.
And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and, his brother, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, thou art the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand, and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up great, a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I might preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and said unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out, and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. You know, this is a, a great intro, right? I mean, the Gospel of Mark just, just comes out swinging in the first chapter, man. You know, just let you know who Jesus is, man. And we love this Gospel of Mark. It's, it's, it's more condensed than, than some of the other uh, Gospel accounts, but it's powerful. In, in, in the Gospel of Mark, also, there's some emphasis in here the, on the authority of Jesus, on, the, on his authority over not, over, not only over diseases, but also over the devils, you know, and he is casting them out as soon as they, they show up, you know. And also interesting that they know who he is and they're terrified. I, I love that in, in the Gospel of Mark, it really shows how the devil is terrified of Jesus. I had a thought as we were singing a little bit earlier that, you know, the scripture tells us that had the devils, had they known, you know, they would have never crucified him. And had they known what the plan was, they'd never crucified him. It, and I don't know if you you ever watch people playing chess. You ever watch a chess tournament going on? And sometimes these guys, like these professional chess players, they'll be there looking at their moves. I mean, they'll, they'll spend a long time analyzing their moves, what they're doing. And sometimes they'll come up with strategies, like weeks before they play this game, weeks before, they come up with a strategy of how they're going to, to, to trap the, the other opponent to win. And it's amazing how, I have to say, that God trapped the enemy right into a plan where the enemy thought he had won. And God just turned the tables right around on him by the resurrection of Jesus. When Jesus rose from the dead, I'm sure that just shattered Satan's, uh, all of his hopes and dreams right there. 
because death couldn't hold him. And I love, I love the fact that he rose again from, you know, the, the enemy's rejoicing turned to sorrow immediately. <laughs> I'm quite sure. You know, he said he threw off principalities, he threw off powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. You know, the realization that, that Christ just won the victory. He just defeated Satan. Satan's plans to keep mankind, to separate man to, from God uh, permanently was upset, was turned over by Jesus. And I just, I just love that. I just absolutely love that. The power and the authority of Jesus Christ, how he came to set the captives free. He did everything the word said that he was going to do. And, you know, if, if Christ didn't rise, then we'd be yet in our sins. If Christ didn't rise, we would have no hope. But Christ did rise, and he defeated death. And death is now forever defeated. It's a defeated foe. And yes, your physical body will die, but you won't. You get to go be with the Lord. And guess what? There's a day called the resurrection. Of, of, you know, and on the resurrection, guess what he's going to do? Raise that body up. Death is no more sting. For a Christian, there's no sting in death. It's just from glory to glory. From this, this glory, walking with the Lord, to eternal glory, walking with the Lord. I love that. God is so good. He is so good to us. You guys, you're going to get excited, like, about midnight tonight, when you realize what I was just talking about. About midnight, you're going to jump out of your bed and say, praise the Lord, Jesus rose from the dead. And you're going to get excited. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. When it happens, let me know about it. Amen? Just call me or something. I, I will wake up for that. Praise the Lord. I'll praise him with you guys. Amen. Okay, so going back, let's go back. You know, verse 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You know, uh, John chapter 20, verse 31. Let's go there. John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 31. Man, you're there. I will, I will back it up just a little bit to verse 30. You know I have to do that. So John, chapter, what chapter? 20, starting at verse 30. I backed up a little bit. It says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing, you might have life through his name. I, I am so thankful that the Lord tells us and shows us here in his, in his holy word that there, there was many other things that Jesus did that we don't, we, don't have, you know, we don't have the record of those things that he did. He did many other things. But the things that are written here are written for one purpose, that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, and that believing we might have life through his name. This is, you know, in the beginning uh, of Mark, in verse 1, it said, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the, the scripture is written for you to understand and come to that realization that Jesus is the Son of God. And because he's the Son of God, you can have life through his name. Life eternal. You, you guys, that's a good thing, right? Like, you guys are excited. I can tell you guys are excited tonight about eternal life and about your relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's a good thing for you to be excited about that. You can't get more excited than you are right now. Amen? Sorry, Randy. The, the, the Mariners are not as important as Jesus. Amen? The Seahawks make a touchdown and people are screaming and people, I tell you about eternal life in Jesus and it's like crickets. We need to fix that. We need to get excited about our relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to be bold about our relationship with Christ and who he is. We need to get out there and tell people about Jesus. Because if we don't tell them, they won't hear. Who's going to tell them? You think Netflix is going to tell them? You think that Fox News or CNN is going to tell them? You need to tell them about Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1. 
Moments one. It's okay to get excited sometimes. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. I can tell. I can tell. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Let's look at it. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. You know, we know that Christ is the Son of God. We know that we can have that confidence in Him because He rose from the dead. Amen. You know, we need to have that, that joy that Jesus rose, that He is the Son of God, that He is our Savior, that we know Him. That, you know, this is a good thing because on the day that you die, you're going to be glad you know Jesus. Amen? Amen. You'll be glad that you, you have that relationship with Christ. Because you have confidence. I, I know him in whom I believe, and I and I know that he is faithful. He is he is faithful to do what he said. I know that. I know that God watches over his word to perform it. I know that. I know that God won't let one bit of his word fall to the ground. And that Christ is the guarantee. He is the guarantee of life. Because he rose from the dead. See, there's a first John chapter one. Let's go to first John chapter one. It's okay to get excited about Jesus. You know, the world gets excited about all kinds of stuff that doesn't matter. Get excited about a new new Xbox game. Who cares about that? You know, get excited about a new car. Let me tell you right now, if you get excited about a car, a car cars wear out, break down, guess what? Your relationship with Christ doesn't. Amen. It's eternal. It's forever. First John, chapter 1. <coughs> John, an eyewitness. Let's hear from him. John, chapter 1. First John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that, you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. You see, John was an eyewitness of Jesus. He says, when he says, in the beginning, uh, he said, that which was from the beginning, talking about Christ, which we have heard. We've heard Him. We've heard Him which we have seen with our eyes. We saw him. He's an eyewitness. We saw him with our eyes, which we have looked upon. We've looked on him. Our hands have handled. we touched him. The word of life. You know, today, so many people have, have faith based on something that, that they haven't seen. But John was an eyewitness, and he's relating to us as an eyewitness of these things. I saw him. I heard him. I touched him. He was right here. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it. And bear witness. It's shown to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That eternal life is Christ. He was with the Father and he was manifested unto us, and we've seen him. And we've heard him. And we touched him. And John's telling you this. Why is he telling you this? And these things write me unto you that your joy may be full. John wants you to have full joy. He wants you to be fully convinced, fully persuaded that Christ, our Lord, came, that he died, that he rose again, and that he's coming back again. This is what it's about, the gospel message. 
to tell the world about Jesus, to proclaim his fame to the world, to glorify Christ. It is not about us. It is not about our name. It's about his name, his great name. Lifting up the name of the Lord to glorify God for what he has done, the great works he has done. You know, he split the Red Sea, right? He, he did ma marvelous works in, in Egypt. He did marvelous works in Israel. But let me tell you, the greatest work was him sending his son, and his son dying on the cross, and him raising up from the dead. He conquered death. He conquered death for you, for you. For all of you. He conquered death. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The life was in his son. Eternal life. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Remember who this is talking about, right? Verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the light was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave me power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus was manifested to this world. Jesus, the Son of God. We have eyewitness testimony. We have irrefutable evidence. We have 500 witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you and I today, we're witnesses. Although we didn't live at that time, we're witnesses today because we know He changed us. He changed us. We're not the same as we were. We have been born again. The word of God does not fail. We have been changed. And one day we'll be completely changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. We know that day's coming. I'm trying to talk about the Son of God tonight, just a little bit about Jesus. He is the great subject of our lives. He is the desire of our souls. And he is everything to us. If we're going to talk about something, I want to talk about Jesus. I don't care about what the world's doing, and I don't care about all the achievements of the world. I do care about Jesus Christ. I do want to talk about him and his glory. You can't glorify God enough. Amen? But sure it's going to be fun trying to. Amen? Amen. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Psalm number 2. Amen? Psalm 2 says this. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord 
and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill, Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. You are blessed when you trust Jesus Christ. Kiss the Son. I love that. You know, you, you don't get to the Father without the Son. you got to go through the Son. You know, and this is wonderful, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by him. Kiss the Son. If you don't trust the Son, you ain't got life. You need to go through Jesus. I love this. I love this scripture. It glorifies Jesus Christ. You understand? It glorifies Him. It lifts Him up. He has been lifted up on a cross. And now today, Christians, we are to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ to this world, to let them know of his great love, of his great glory, of his victory over death. So the world can know, because they need to. I love Jesus. If you love Jesus tonight, then tell somebody. Tell somebody. Don't keep that secret. You got the best news that ever hit the planet. Tell somebody. And if you don't tell them, man, I'm going to tell you just like the Lord said. If we don't tell them, man, you can you imagine the rocks crying out? Trying to, I mean, the world itself is groaning for that day of redemption. The world itself is groaning. Tell them. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Tell them. Let them know about Christ. Let them know of his great love. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let yourself stop you. Don't let the world stop you. Don't let culture stop you. Tell them of his great love. And when they hate you and despise you and cast your name out as evil, tell them of his great love and love them more. Love them more. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And still through today, they don't. They're walking in darkness. Tell them that Christ is worth it. To partake of the sufferings of Christ is worth it. Because one soul converted is victory. It's joy forever. The angels of heaven rejoice when one sinner repents. So tell them. Tell them. We're running out of time. We only have so much life left from this world. Use it for his glory. I plead with you, use it for his glory. Because soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We thank you for for making a way of salvation available to all mankind. You call us, you reason, you, you said, come now, let us reason together. Lord, you desire for men to repent. You don't, you, you don't get any pleasure from the death of the wicked, you said so in your word. You desire that men would repent and have life. Oh, Lord, let the church not be silent. 
but let us be bold. Give us boldness. Lord, your great love, let it fill our hearts that we bubble over, that we have to tell somebody the good news about Jesus. Let the church not be silent in these last days, but let us be bold as lions, proclaiming the good news of the gospel to all. Those that will hear, let them hear. Those who will not, they will not. But Lord, let us be faithful to give your message as you have commanded us. We pray this in Jesus, our Savior's great, great name. Amen and amen. May God bless you and keep you.